Well, listen, everybody, let's settle down. Let's settle down. Let's settle down. You guys get your seatbelts out, get your journals out, your cordenos, your lapis, your plumas, and let's go to escuela, to school today. You know, people always ask, what do you do for a living? So today we're going to do a little bit of training of what people ask you questions, okay? So it's going to be a little interactive today, okay? Have you ever got the question, what do you do for a living? Has anybody got that? How, how would some of you answer that question? Take your phone off, Mr. Clinton, if we can do people over there as they put their hand up in the chat. We're going to interactive helping you get through some of the objections you have when you're out in the field. Can we do that today? So what do you do for a living? How would you guys answer that question? Put your hand up, take your phone off one at a time, and let's, I'm going to help you walk through some of these ops, uh, some of these oppositions that people, or objections, should I say, people have. Ms. Deborah, uh, Deborah Rockmore, yes, ma'am. How do you answer that? I'm an essential services broker. That's a good one. I'm an essential service broker. I love that one. Ms. Kathleen Williams, how would you answer it? I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur, okay, in that, in that fashion. That still leaves us a kind of a wide gap. I like the idea of the broker because it narrows it down to asset people. So what do you broker? See, so I want to have a little more of a precise answer. Okay. Mr. Josh Casey. Thank you, dear. Mr. Casey. I help people and business owners monetize their bills and turn them into assets. Oh, I monetize business owners' bills and turn them into assets. That's a really good one. See that? See, we're looking for answers to make people want to ask you more about what it is you do, because most answers are pretty candid, the same one. Yes, Ms. Lynch. Yes, I help people save money or make money based on their dreams. I help people save money or make money based upon their dreams. That's a very good one. Who else want to chime in? Anybody else? I'm going to share with you guys something that I, a guy asked me the other day. He asked me, <laughs> he goes, what do you do for a living? And that's what I said to this young man. He was a young guy. He's about 26, 27. He was a youngster. And I said this to him. I said, a better question to ask me is, what am I doing while I'm living? Oh. Write that one down. Um, and I said to him, a better question to ask me is, what am I doing while I'm living? And he looked at me like he was shocked. I always do shock of shock shock at all kind of questions and answers because I don't want to be like the average person the same questions. I want to be able to knock them off their feet that they want to ask me, what are you who, who are you, sir? What do you do? You know, no a better question would be asking me, what am I doing while I'm living? Well, what do you do while you're living? Matter of fact, what you, now he's really zoned in because he never heard that question. You see, you want to be able to come across with not the same, oh, oh here we go, it's probably network market. oh, that's MLM, oh, that's some a scheme, scam. you know, like I said to the guy the other day, he says, man, uh, so like a scam, you guys heard that one before? And I said this way, I said, how old are you, man, if you don't mind, he's another guy, he's 41 years old, I'm 41 years old. I said, let me explain what scam, scam means you're still confused about money. <laughs> Successful business owners, see, business owners understand business, a uh, matter of fact, Mr. Unser is on the call right now. He, we did his live last night. He, he was great with this question because entrepreneurs understand investments. Everybody else thinks it's a scam. Do you realize it? Because we're trained to get a job and it's nothing wrong with a job. Don't get me wrong. It's nothing wrong with a job. There's nothing wrong with a job. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing at all. But anything outside of that, we put a label on it as a scam. Okay? So you want to make sure that you have great questions that make them want to know more about what you do. Who else had a question along that line? What other things you want to say? And let, and, 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 and let me say this, ladies and gentlemen. As you're out there around your relatives, as we come into the holiday seasons and, and summer's over, we're around our friends that uh, laugh at us for doing network marketing, you know, let me give you guys something super valuable. I was praying this morning. When uh, um, Don't let anybody rain on your parade with negativity. Yeah, still confused about my. Don't let anybody ram your parade about 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 about. If it's not building you up, don't listen. If it doesn't build you up, don't listen. If it's not something positive, don't listen. So let's go back to our question. What are the questions you've run into out in the field that may have a question that stuns you, or you don't have the answer to, or how would how would how would how would Mr. Thomas? If you ever run across a question, ask yourself this: How would Mr. Thomas answer? Oh, here's my answer. And I guarantee you, after a while, you could boom. Oh my God, that came out of my mouth. Oh, I remember saying that. 
So what are the questions you run into that you have a problem with out there as you're prospecting to get names and numbers? What are some of the other obstacles you may see yourself running into? Nobody's got it. That means, that means my money. You got to have, also have 20, 30 of these each. See, let me explain something to you. The reason why I'm having this conversation is this reason. Write this down. You can only... You can, Somebody's trying to call me. You can only grow with, with challenges. If you don't have any challenges in your life, you cannot grow. I was on a call with a, with a, with a, with a person this morning, and they had a challenge with something. I helped them answer that, that question because it was a challenge. So, and get their answer to get yourself unstuck so you can move up there. So you can only grow through challenges. I have a challenge call. So you're on my challenge call. Why is it called a challenge call? Because it's challenging you to do more. Write this down. In other words, to, to have more, you must learn how to what? Do more. And that's why it's a challenge. So you have to understand challenge, 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 challenge. So what are the challenges are you coming up with out there that you need help with? Mr. Thomas, this is still on. Yes, sir. Yes. So I, I had a major cha challenge when I started my network marketing career to get people in front of the information because they want to know what it is, what are we going to do, and all those questions. And the, the biggest concern was, is that a network marketing? So I've learned to say, do you love network marketing? I hate network marketing. Oh, you're going to love this then. Or do you love network marketing? Oh, I love that. Oh, you're going to love this then. So just getting people in front of the information because the biggest doubters that I had became my partners. But getting yeah. them in front of the information, this is the biggest challenge. So don't go into conversations if it's network marketing or not. You don't. You hate network marketing? Great. You're going to love what I have to show you. That's it. I love it. That's so true. That's a good one. Because it gets past their stigma. Because <laughs> this is what happened. We have this stigma. And how do we get that stigma? By what our mother, father, sister, brother, cousin, dog, cat, uncle, aunt said about network marketing. They all had a friend selling Amway. Well, I'm sorry. Selling whatever. And they have this stigma. I said, let me give you the right, inf the correct information. See, that's about correct. See, and, and people don't understand. And, and let me let me show how I break people's walls down. You guys like to learn this technique. This is a great technique I use, and it's been very successful, Mr. Mr. Williams. Very successful. But people say, how many heard this? What are you selling? How many guys heard that one? What are you selling, Mr. Pate? What are you selling? What are you selling? What are you selling? I guess a dirty word. Ah, what are you selling? What are you selling? You know. So here's how I break through that one. Because we all hate to be sold, right? Right, right. We all hate to be sold, Edith. We all, Mr. Curry, hate to be sold. Nobody wants to be sold unless it's a girl or Boy Scout selling Boy Scout or Girl Scout cookies. We all hate to be sold. We all do. So here's what I say when people say, what are you selling? Watch my facial expression. Ugh. Don't curse at me. That's exact. <laughs> See, look at Mr. Spears been laughing. See, I already know what your reaction is. I say, don't curse at me because I'm saying I, I'm like you. Your body language is so important and how you respond to people. Watch this. I'm not selling you anything. If you're writing it down, write it word for word. I'm not selling anything. Now, write this down. Write S and then an S under the, that S and then write an S under the third S. Okay? So S, S, S in the line, straight down your pad and paper. Here's what I told people. This has been, this helped me so many this gets me past so many walls. It gets me past <clears throat> all, the, all the stuff. I'm not selling anything. First S, I'm here to share. Write that word down. I'm here to do what, Terry? Oh, I'm here to share some information with you, Jackie Black. I'm here to what, Miss Lee? Miss Lett? I'm here to share some information. And what you do with it's up to you. I'm here to share some information. Watch this. How you can save money. Second S is save money. And the third S is on services that you use every single day until the day you die. Word for word that. And you'll be surprised. There, The walls come down and their ears open up because everybody in this recession, when your gas is going up, food's going up, everything's going up with your income. They all want to know how to save money. Bottom line, we're every day in the papers, we're here. Intel leaving off 14,000. Uh, Microsoft leaving off 12,000. <clears throat> You know, Amazon's laid up 12,000 more. So people are open now. 
I'm here to help you. I'm here to share some information with you, Ms. Kathleen Williams, how you can save money on services you're going to use every day until the day you die. Now, who would want to hear information? Now they're open. Now they're open. Now they're open. Now, they're open. now watch. Here's one of my favorite ones that I do, Mr. Mr. Mills. <clears throat> one of my favorite ones. I'll say, who's your cell phone company? Great. AT&T stands for Al Thomas and Team. <laughs> MCI, whatever. Whatever they say, I don't care. I, I, this, is what, this is how I get people. Every time you drive down the highway see the billboard, you pay for that billboard and high rates on your phone. We're the wholesaler. Watch the word I'm using. We all realize retail, wholesale. Retail, wholesale. We're the wholesalers. In other words, watch this, Mr. Dwight. My company says, Ms. Etna, if I sign up my service, watch this, and five other services, my service is what? Free. Oh, and I do all these commercials like the VA commercial. Bam. I forgot. I have to pay $3.95 for taxes. Ta-da! And I'll say, so Mr. Manny Peralta, how much is your service? He'll maybe say $120. I said, let me ask you a question, sir. What's more important, $3.95 or $120? See, watch this. Did I sell him anything? No. I just did what? Shared, Mr. Mr. Vega, I just shared some information. Did I try to convince him? No. Did I sell him? No. I made comment, hello, comment, hello, hello, anybody there? I just made common sense. Who would not? Let me hook my my uh, my. Uh, let me get my. There we go. Plug it in. Who would not want to save money? Who would not want to save money? So let's figure it out. One hundred twenty dollars a year a month times twelve months. That's fourteen hundred and forty dollars, right? Or three dollars, <throat> three dollars and ninety five cent times twelve is forty seven dollars and forty cent. Which one would you? What month? What one makes sense to you? You see how I approach it? Because when you go in there, they're trying to think you're going to try to sell them something. So when I approach it that way, and then I did this a couple of months ago with one of my new ideals, and he called me, said, Mr. Thomas, I'm meeting my uncle, who's an older gentleman, and my nephew at Starbucks. Can you come in and, and kind of be there with me as I talk to him? I'm new in the business. I said, absolutely. So when I got to the coffee shop, we sat there in Starbucks outside, well, under the, under the terrace because it's kind of hot out here, and we sat under in the shade. And the first thing we, after I introduced myself, got the names and those, all the niceties, got our coffee, and and I said, all I said, watch how I did this. I pulled out my cell phone. I said, imagine this. That's all I said to him. I said, imagine this. My cell phone bill is only three dollars and ninety five cent a month, unlimited everything, and I put my cell phone on the table. If I said that to you, what would your questions be to me? What would your question be? How's that possible? That's exactly what the uncle said. And I went on to share some more information with him. I said to him, Tracy Gilmore, my company that I represent allowed me to sign Maria Strada, my cell phone up, and five more. Now they'll allow me Allow me, Daryl Ransom, to get mine for free. Oh, bam, I got to pay the taxes of $3.95 a month. How much are you paying, Uncle? $120. How much you paying, nephew? $135. The uncle said to me, sign me up. The nephew said, I ain't crazy, get me too. So my new IVO got two customers right there because how I approached it. This is how you do it. Don't go trying to sell people. Rather go to H E L L <laughs> than S E L L because people are scared of sales. Don't be a salesperson. Just be you. The last guy I signed up said, "I'm not a salesperson," and I said to him, "I said, let me ask you a question, Mister Mister Rogers. Where did you hear me say about being a salesperson?" But see, that's how the average person thinks. I got a salesperson. I said, well, who said that? I mean, let me ask you a question. Are you married? Got a girlfriend? Somebody sold somebody. <laughs> but who said that? It's in their mind. They think they got to be something that nobody said they are. 
So how do you work through that, Mr. Thomas? Well, I just share it with you. Hey, I'm here to share some information. What you do with the information is totally up to you. The situation for all you people on the call today, if you guys would do this, you get in front of more people and you have more sign up. See, the, 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 the obstacle most people have is getting in front of people. If you get in front of the people and do this with them, you'll have much more greater success. Because all I'm here to do is share information. Hey, if, I, hey, if somebody's down the street selling something for $100, you can get it for $50, would you want to hear about it? Yeah, of course. See, that's all we're doing here, sharing information. So let's go back. Share. I'm here to share some information, number one, on how you can what? Save money on what? On services you're going to use every day for the rest of your life. The day you, and matter of fact, when you die, you're going to take your cell phone to your wife. Hey, baby, come on. Heaven, heaven's beautiful. Come on up here. Bring the kids. <laughs> so you have to have some fun, fun, fun. See, you see my approach? And I have more people because I'm not going at them trying to sell them something. That's why the walls are resistance up. I want that wall to come all the way down, Sam Foster, Mr. Anderson, all the way down. I'm here to share some information, Trevon, how you can save money, Ms. Walker, on service, Ms. Melissa Williams, you use every day to the day you die. See, now they're more open because that makes sense. I'm not trying to sell them. I'm sharing. Does everybody get that? That is one of the easiest way. I'm telling you, that cuts right through the red tape. That cuts through everything. It's hard to have. There's no opposition in that. There's no threat in that. There's no, let me, uh, that, that doesn't make sense. Because all I want to do, bottom line, let's make sense. Does this make sense? That's all I'm doing, sharing information. And next thing you know, now they're clawing at me, want to know more. Does that make sense? Give me another objection that you guys have out there that you're coming up with that you might need to help with. I told my cousin, I don't sell services, folks. That's right, I don't sell them. I share with how they can save money. Look, let me give you two analogies that I use a lot of times. Number one analogy. I like Tommy Bahama silk. I like Tommy Bahama silk shirts. Daryl Ransom out there knows how much I like Tommy Bahama silk shirts. Matter of fact, Daryl Ransom, where's he at? I, I recruited Daryl Ransom at a, at, a, <laughs> at a Tommy Bahama shirt place in Nashville. Now, watch this, everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's where he was working. And, and, yeah, if I, and watch this. If I went to the regular Tommy Bahama, why, everybody look at me. I would pay $150 retail for a shirt when I can go to the outlet where Mr. Del Ransom was the outlet for $75. Why would I pay $150 when I get it for $75? That's just common sense. So when I, when I explain the opportunity, I explain it to where they can understand it. Let me give another analogy that you can use that some of you don't know. Let me give you one that everybody can use. I'm going to give you a really good one. Here's how I do this other analogy. Number two analogy, Mr. Carey, here we go. When you get sick and you go visit your doctor, he gives you a pill on it with a P for Pfizer, right? Yeah, that's right, Ms. Thomas. Let's say that pill costs $10, okay? The doctor never told you that it has the same pill without a P on it down here for $2. From Pfizer without the P on it. One has a P for $10. One has no P from the same company called Generic. Same company, same pill. Why did not the doctor say about the $2 pill? Well, because he makes or she makes more money selling you the $10 pill. Same company, same everything. One has advertisement, one don't. When I use that analogy, people get it. They get it so easy. See, it's all in our approach. It's all in how you tell the story. That's where a lot of us fail. So now, oh, that makes sense. See, now they can relate to what we do. Does that make sense to everybody out there? So it's a storytelling. It's how you say it. Look, I could step on Dave Culver's shoes out there and say, excuse me. Or I could step on his shoes and say, excuse me. It's the same words, but it's how it was said. Is everybody, everybody getting this? So it's, 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 we just need to understand how to talk to people. People, are, they're really that simple. There's only nine bad people in the whole world. They just move around a lot. <laughs> but it's not that difficult, folks. It really isn't. So what's your next question on what to do or what to say when you're out in the field talking to people? Because if I get everybody on this call getting five and six and seven people, names and numbers a day, your check will be so big, it'll be the bank will bounce. <laughs> so what other objections do you have out there getting names and numbers? Come on, I'm a, I'm a, I'm mastered this for 35 years. My God, this is simple. Uh, when people sit, uh, uh, talk about money, when people ask about the money, 
What do you mean by when the people ask about? Take your phone, Mr. Clemens, see if Mr. Uh, uh, Appointee can take your phone off, and I want everybody to hear the question before I answer it. Are you there, Mr. Appointee? I'm here. Okay, what's your question um, here? Okay, so the major objection that I come across, and it's not, you know, before then, before this call, I was like not knowing my worth, um, you know, or being afraid to speak up um, was about the money. So when they asked like, oh, so you must be rich doing all this stuff that you do. Um, so they talk consistently come about like, oh, so how much money are you making? Okay, let's let's take one at a time. Here's the answer to the first one. I have, let me grab my, let me grab this. Let me grab this. I'm going to grab these cassette tapes, show you how old I am. I go back to the good old days when I came out with my first cassette tapes, uh, the 25 keys to network marketing. Okay, 25. Okay, and then I came out with another cassette tape. And I answered the question this way. How much money are you making? You, here's the answer. Here's the answer, which this is my answer on the cassette tape. My answer is, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. And here's the second part of my answer. What difference does it make? You can't spend it. Let me help you get yours. Oh, yeah, see, it's funny. But see, I've heard, I've, I've heard every question you guys heard. Now, watch this. Every question you guys have, I've heard it at least 10,000, maybe 20,000 times over 35. I heard the same question over. Because people are like parents. They repeat the same questions. They don't, they don't change very often. They're the same questions. They all go to the same parent school. <laughs> but let me show you how to get yours. Let me show you how to get yours. Now, let me, this, is a, this is a very good, I'm glad you brought that up. Now, let me give you my million dollar clothes. This is gonna really bless some of you. This is gonna really bless you. So here's what I do. Well, let me get one of my, I got five or six notepads around me. I, I got tons of these around me. I just got them everywhere because I'm always thinking and writing, thinking and writing. Here's how I do this. This is what I do every time I sit down with a new person. Even on my Tuesday trainings, I go into this, uh, my presentation, and I tell people right up front, if you guys are with me on Tuesday Tuesday nights, I tell people right up front, it's a business, it's 320. I tell them right up front why you can go into the program. So therefore, the ones you don't want to hear, they hang up, right? Watch this. I only have one person do it because I'm up front. And when I tell them up front, let me tell you, it's $324. It's a business, but I'm going to show you how to make 600 800 or 1,000 if you stick with me. Now, watch this. Everybody look at me. Now you can relax because I know what you're thinking. Where's the catch? Where's the catch? Where's the catch? Where's the catch? They're always looking for the catch because I told them it's $324 up front. Now they can relax oh, and enjoy me reading the eight boxes to them because I already told them the catch. That makes sense? Because otherwise, they, 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 they're, they're on the defense. Where's the catch? I know there's a catch in here. But I already told you it's 324. So here's what I do to people. And I tell them when I sit down, $324 is the investment. I let them know right up front. However, if you're writing this down, however, my goal for you, and I make it personal. I always make it personal. I always make it personal. I always make it personal. My goal for you, my goal for you, Janet Mason, is to make you get five services, you get $200 sent to your bank account. So right now, and we're going to do this within 30 days, okay, within 30 days. Now, what I tell my people on my team, we do it in average of 14 days. That's what we're known to do. So I'm setting the expectation not to wait 30. We do it on my team. We do it in 14 days, okay? But the company says you got 30 days, but we do it. Most people, 85% of the people on my team, we get it done in, 40, in, in 50, 14 days. See, notice this. I'm setting the expectation. The what? Expectation. The what? Expectation. If you tell them 30 days, some of you, how many guys got to wait till the last day to get them people qualified? And you lost out on some money. But I tell them in two weeks, we're going to get it done because that's 85% of the people on my team. <laughs> we do it in two weeks. Okay? So I set the expectation high. Next, I see you get three more services for eight, another $200. And I showed that. I just write it out for them. And I said, you got all your money back. You got $400. You got $400. Grand total is $400. Grand total. Oh, okay, Ms. Tom. So you're already in the black. You get three more services, but three under the 11, uh, under the eight, is $200 more for a grand total. Grand total of what? 
$600 of $600. So not only that, and I keep reminding them, I keep reminding them, Ms. Rutherford, I keep reminding them $324 has got you back $600. I keep reminding them $324 got you back $400. $324, I always keep telling them to remind them because it's psychological. Your $324 investment already made you $600. So you're already saying, man, this is good stuff. However, if you get three more, like Mr. Mandy up there in Chicago, up in up in New York City, for fourteen, another two hundred dollars equals a grand. I always use the word grand total. Don't it's two hundred. Notice that I always show the two hundred. So I always show as a grand total of eight hundred dollars. So now your three hundred twenty-four dollars got you a grand total of how much? Eight hundred dollars. Now let me ask you a dumb question. Does that make sense to people out there? Did I show you a way to get your money back? There's three questions that everybody have. What is it, guys, I've, I've, been, I've trained on this point. Three questions that everybody have. Number one, how much it going to cost me? I tell them up front on Tuesday, it's 324. Number two, number two, uh, 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 can I, uh, no, wait, <laughs> can I do it? Can you read the boxes? Yeah. And number three question, when can I get my what? All they care about, when can they get their money back? I've already showed you. Within, within two weeks. If you guys use this formula, your checks be so big the bank will bounce. And then I go one more. I said you got three more services like Mr. Sam Foster out there for seventeen, another two hundred dollars, so a grand total of one thousand dollars. Watch this. You made two more, got three more services for seventeen, for another two hundred dollars, a grand total of a thousand dollars on a what? I keep reminding them on a three hundred and twenty-four dollar investment. You got to keep bringing up how much they invested. You guys, it's psychological. Let it keep going in their head. You only put up $324. You got back $1,000. Let me ask you guys a question. Does that make sense to you? Watch this. I'm not trying to sell you. I just asked you a common sense question. Mr. Mr. Roberts, uh, uh, Robert Williams, does that make sense to you, sir? Janet Mason, does that make sense to you? I just want to, I just want to confirm. Does that make sense to you, Mr. Harrison Mills? Does that make sense? Did I sell you? No, you sold yourself. You bought the whole ticket. Look, line and sinker. Does that make sense, Miss Lynn? Does that make sense? And look, look at my head. Does that make sense? Ryan Swallow, does that make sense? Let me ask you a question. G. Valdez, would you put up $324 and make $1,000 within 30 days with me? Would you do that with me? Now, here's my disclaimer. Here's my disclaimer. Write this down, folks. This is powerful. Here's my disclaimer. If you are what? Coachable. That's right. You got to be coachable. That's my disclaimer. If you are coachable, not everybody's coachable. If you are coachable, if you are coachable, if you are coachable, everybody's not coachable. Everybody's not coachable. Does that make sense? So <clears throat> that's how I do it. I keep it real simple. That's my presentation is so dumbed down that I tell like on Tuesday, go over here Tuesday, watch me do this in front. Hey guys, thank you for joining the call tonight. We thank you for your time. Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now up front, it's a business. Let me say it again, it's a business. I'm gonna say it a third time. This is a business. It's not a J-O-B and there's nothing wrong with a job, but this is a business for people who want something different. I'm gonna let you know right now, it's $324 to join. But I, I'm going to give you all that right up front because I know you. some of you are looking for the catch to catch. It's got to be a catch or a scheme. No, I want to show right up front. Watch this. So you can relax and enjoy the information. And when I say that, the whole the, the, you can feel people's demeanor go, oh, okay. He's somebody I can listen to because he told me the truth up front. And then they enjoy the presentation. I'm telling you, I have more success with that. Next question. We've got time for a couple more questions. Mr. Thomas, what yes. about that person who begins to talk about, oh, I've got family, I've got a job, I've got a, another job, I don't have time. And then the second question is, do you judge people off of a lousy handshake? Because I just got one this morning. <laughs> I try not to judge people, but we all judge people. Uh, see, I don't have time. Well, let's, let's address the first question. I don't have time. Well, sir or ma'am, if I talked to you two years ago, guess what? You wouldn't have time then either. 
If I talk to you two years from now, you still won't have time. Let me ask you a question. When do you want to get your time back? And I smile at them. So in other words, I want to be a mirror. I want, to, I want them to understand. You lied about that in the past. You're going to lie about it in the future. You're lying about it right now. Until you want. We all make time for stuff we want to do. But hey, I tell people, when do you want to solve that problem? Because I tell them the past. If I asked you two years ago, guess what you'd have said? You'd have said the same thing. And two years from now, guess what? You'll say the same thing. But you know what happened in the meantime? You're getting older, aren't you? So when are you going to change that? That's all I ask people. I let them tell me. See, a good speaker is going to pull out the answers from people. Let them tell them and make them make them discover. Now, when I shake people's hand, uh, I had a guy, uh, I, I, I don't like weak hand shakes. I just don't. I had a guy the other day, he said, well, I'll give you my, watch this. Instead of giving me his name and number, watch what he did. Instead of giving me his name and number, he said, let me give you my email. You prospect somebody said, let me give you my email. To me, let me tell you what that means to me. That means, uh, that's kind of like a brush off to me. I don't like, to me, that's kind of, uh, no, I don't want your email. So here's what I told him. I said, I'm not going to take your email. Watch this. Some of you that took his email. Uh, uh. I don't. I'm not here to make him feel bad. I just don't have time to play with people. Hey, he won't. He, let me give you my email. I said. I tell you what I'll do. Here, go to my channel and subscribe, and watch a few of my videos. And if you like what you see, drop your number in the comments, and I'll get back to you. And I walked away. I have so many people calling me and leaving messages because they watch four, five, or six of my videos, and also now they, oh, let me call you. Hey, man, you'd be surprised. See, in other words, instead of taking his email, to me, that's, that's like, uh, take my email. I don't want to talk to you. No, I'm not taking it. Here, go to my channel, subscribe, and watch who I am. And if you like what I'm doing, then you call me. See, I turn the tables. I don't, I don't play those kind of games. I turn the table with people like that. Because that's a brush off to me. That's like, eh, eh. So I don't accept that. Here, you need to know who I am. See, do you, do you walk with the authority? Do you walk in the authority that God given you? Because you have an authority. You know, you are a seed from God, but a lot of us are walking way beneath our privileges and you have to claim what you want. And you got to go out there with the intentions of succeeding. When I go to an airport, I plan I'm getting on a plane because I have the intentions of getting where I want to go. I may not get there on the same flight, but I'm going to get there eventually because I know where I want to go. When you do that, you'll find out something about you. You will claim something. You, you have to claim what you want. You have to go out there and get what you want. Look, we all got the same amount of hours, 24 hours a day. It's what you do with it. You do not want your future self, watch this, your future self to be mad at your present self. Uh-oh, let me say that one more time. You don't want your future self a year or two from now be mad at your present self because you didn't get off your backside and go out there and do what you need to go do for you and your family. You are a royal priesthood. You are a very unique person. You are in his image. Let me tell you something. If you did not come from a wealthy family, which I didn't either, if you did not come from a wealthy family, by God, a wealthy family needs to come from you. Let me say that again. If you did not come from a wealthy family, a wealthy family, hallelujah, needs to come from you. He gave you everything you need. If he did not think that you could do ACM and become a senior vice president, you would have never got this opportunity. Now, you got to walk in the authority and walk with the and, and ambition and with the idea I am who I say I am. And I'm a, I, I got him on my back. Look, it's like being in a fight. You got your big brother with you. And how could you lose? With the stuff that you use. But if you don't know that you don't know, that's a trick of the enemy thinking, well, uh, well, um, uh, I'm not, uh, no, 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 walking the authority he's giving you. So many of us got it, but we're so scared to let it come out of us. We say, oh, I'm, I'm stepping my bees. Oh, it's not me, Mr. Thomas. What's not you? Being successful? What's not you? Claiming what you want to have? What's not you? When I bought my 8,000 square foot mansion in Sacramento, I wrote it down on my sheet. I wanted this house. When I drove up to it, I told a real estate lady if I even got out, the, out of her car, that's my mansion. She goes, how's your mansion? You can see the inside. I've already claimed it in Jesus' name. I know that's mine. And I walked in there. And I said, oh, it's got three pyramids on the dry circle driveway. And I said, yeah, that's mine. And she said, <laughs> she goes, why? I said, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And I'm in the pyramid deal. This is my house. <laughs> see, but you're walking it, folks. You got to claim it. Y'all sitting around here getting pushed around by the devil. No, I claim it. Every day I walk and claim it. Man, I'm excited about life because why? I love helping people. Look, with a closed fist, you can't give or receive. The more God gives you, the more you open up, the more you give, the more he'll give you. Don't you understand the law of prosody? You've got to go out there and get it. It's yours. you got to take it. We're so timid. No, no, no. Why do we get the word on one day of the week and the rest of six days with the devil just knock us around? No, go out there and get it. Go out there and take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Why? It's yours. But if you don't know who you are, then you'll be timid about it and you think, well, that, I'm, I'm okay. No, you're not okay. 
Do you realize how many sperms it took to make you, one you? You beat out over five million sperms, and there you are. So you're already a winner. You came out of a winner. But you're living beneath what he's given you. He gave you the power and the authority. And I'm going to go back to say this. He gave you this business. If he didn't think you could do this business, he would have never gave it to you. Well, look, I don't mean to go this route, but y'all get me worked up over here. First Thessalonians, or I think it's chapter, verse 11. He said he gave you to be quiet when you get around successful people who's already done it. That's me. The second part, it says, he gave you your own business. It's in the Bible. He gave you your business. Oh, my God. And he'll bless it. Go check it out. It's my dear friend, Dr. Miles Roll. He said, and I quote, he says, your, 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 your job is what they pay you to do. Ain't nothing wrong with a job. There's nothing wrong with it. It's what they paid you to do. Your work is what he's given you to do. Oh, my God. Let me say that again. Your job is what they pay you to do. Your work, your work is what he gives you to do. He gave you this to work it. Guy said to me the other day, here's what I, here's what I throw people off. But let me give you another one before I get off the phone. Guy asked me the other day, so I, I always ask people, hey, what type of business, watch this, what, kind of, what type of business are you in? When you ask people that question, have you ever noticed they always want to relate who they are to their job? What kind of business are you in? Well, I work for the insurance company. What kind of business are you in? Well, I, I'm a real estate person. No, 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 no. That's your job. What's your business after you get off your job? And most people's face go white and go blank. <gasps> what does that mean? Well, what are you doing to build wealth for your family after five o'clock? What is your business? See, don't tell me about your job. What is your business? That's a good question y'all could ask me, by the way. Write that one down. Hey, what, work, what, kind of, what kind of work are you in? And they always want to tell you about their job. Most people identify, uh oh, identify with their job. And nothing wrong with a job. Don't get me wrong. I, I know, I, no, it's nothing wrong with a job. But I said, what kind of work are you in? They go, no, I, I work at, no, 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 that's your work. What kind of business are you in? Well, that's why I work, no, no, no. What kind of business are you in after five o'clock? Or what kind of business are you in when you clock out? They just don't, they, they don't know because they were not trained to have a business. Folks, you guys are light years away from the average person. Do you realize you have a multi-million dollar business in your hands? Now you just got to go to work. And that's why I want to talk about how to handle objections today. Because it's so important to understand. You guys have a unique business. And more and more as I read the papers and hear things happening around our great, not, not just the United States, but around the world, how things are in such a disarray. People are looking for you, and you you got to go get them. Take it by force. First Thessalonians 4, I think it's 11. Be quiet when you get around successful people, and then go to work in your business. You didn't say it in your job. It says your business. It's right there in your little black book. Some of y'all didn't read it. Oh, my God. Don't have me preach up in here. It's your business. Now, go out there and set the world on fire. Change your family tree. Change the destiny, change the trajectory of your income, change the next generation and generations to come that you put that, that picture of the fireplace mount at your house. They'll say, who's the great, great, great grandpa? Well, he, they did something different to change the family tree forever. And that'll be you and your wife, you and your family, because you deserve it. Folks, I'm here to tell you, every one of you deserve it. Now go to work and make it real.